And I think the, the way in which the conventions matter is, for a lot of people, this is really the first time that they're sort of turn, tuning in in some detail. And so they're starting to see the candidates and their ideas and starting to form their impressions. You know, I think probably in the end, people won't remember so much, you know, the, the booing of the Bernie Sanders people or the booing of Ted Cruz or all these sort of little, you know, things that happen in a given day. But they will, you know, sort of remember the, the images that overall the parties are trying to present. Yeah, I mean, the Cruz thing to me is fascinating. So he drew a lot of boos, right, uh, and some criticism from Republicans. But Ted Cruz is nothing if not a canny politician. Uh, and I suspect that Ted Cruz is thinking something along the following lines. Donald Trump is likely to lose in November if we look at the current polling. Uh, and so he's going to be well positioned to say, in you know, the aftermath of the 2016 election, if in fact Trump does lose, to say, ha, ah, I told you. The problem is that you ran this person who's not a true conservative, and you veered away from conservative principles. I'm the one who told you to stick to, to conservative principles. I'm the person who should be the party standard bearer in 2020. So I think Cruz is really kind of looking down the tree, and he's going to try and set himself up for a future presidential run. I think that's what that speech was about. He didn't want someone in 2020 or 2024 to be able to come back to him and say, oh, but you endorsed Donald Trump in 2016, because he'll now be able to say, you know, no, I disavowed that part uh, of the movement, and I'm, in fact, the true ideological conservative who's never wavered from his principles. So if you look at the elite Democratic Party, right, the people who are in the DNC, the other elected officials, they were basically always 100% behind Hillary Clinton, right? Senator Sanders is not really a Democrat even today. He's an independent who caucuses with the Democrats. So he is someone who is not particularly well loved among you know, many elite Democrats and you know, among some rank and file Democrats as well. And so the types of people who I think were most angered by it were the sort of Sanders supporters who were always outside of the party. So, you know, they might have come from the Occupy movement or from other types uh, of sort of left wing groups, Code Pink or environmental activists that they didn't really care that they were making the party look bad because they never really saw themselves as having joined the party. They were about the kind of message that Bernie Sanders had rather than, per se, electing a Democrat, which is going to be quite different from many of the other uh, delegates. So the RNC, what we really saw in a way was a negative case, right? It was basically lock her up, here's why Hillary Clinton is bad. Very few people made a positive case for Donald Trump, right? So there were some vague allusions to the fact that he's a businessman, he's been very successful, he knows how to do these things, but a sort of short on specific policy proposals, right, or reasons uh, to vote for him, the reason was basically Hillary Clinton is corrupt. The Democrats certainly did uh, some very forceful and vociferous attacks on Trump. And I actually thought one of the most uh, effective attacks against Trump was from the parents of the slain Muslim soldier. I thought that was a particularly emotionally uh, powerful speech in the way they were able to highlight the, one of the themes of the Clinton campaign, which is a sort of stronger together theme that we do better when we come together. To me, as a political scientist, one of the more interesting aspects was that we saw the Democratic Party uh, trying to take ownership of foreign policy and national security. Right? So I thought one of the most effective lines in Secretary Clinton's acceptance speech was when uh, she turned to foreign policy and she said, you know, Mr. Trump claims that he knows more about ISIS than the generals, and she just paused very effectively. She said, no, Donald, you don't. Right? And that drew huge applause from the crowd, and she went on to talk about her extensive foreign policy experience, especially her time as Secretary of State. I think that sets up a, a pretty effective contrast for her going into the general election.